Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Speaking Cinema, serious movie jibber jabber, a movie podcast coming to you from Los Angeles, California, America, planet Earth. With me today is Kevin. Hi there. Matt. Hi. So, this week on the jibber jabber, be without fear in the face of your enemies, safeguard the helpless, do no wrong. We watched 2006 Kingdom of Heaven director's cut. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> Or we're so, going to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna watch Kingdom of 2006 Kingdom of Heaven Dark Sky. If you're not familiar, Balian of Elabin travels to Jerusalem during the Crusades of the 12th century, where he finds himself as the defender of the city and its people. Kingdom of Heaven is directed by Ridley Scott and written by William Monahan, who also wrote The Departed, with a cast of digital thousands of warriors, but also Eva Green, Orlando Bloom, Leon Neeson, Edward Norton, and many, many more. 20th Century Fox bought Monaghan's spec script Tripoli in 2001, brought him in to meet with Ridley Scott, who collaborates with Fox very often, as someone who would potentially direct it. Scott and Monaghan were talking. Monahan, Scott told Monaghan he wanted to do a movie about knights, which led to the shelving of Tripoli and the eventual production of Kingdom of Heaven, which was, I believe, commissioned based on that conversation, mm -hmm. which was shot in Morocco, which Scott had also shot movies in Morocco like Black Hawk Down and Gladiator. So the movie comes out. Scott was reported to be unhappy with a the theatrical version of the film, which was allegedly simplified by Fox, based on the opinions of preview audiences. The theatrical cut is said to also uh, not meet box office expectations, which Scott blamed on marketing, and because it made the story seem like an epic romance instead of a political, religious, historical drama. Mm -hmm. And uh, an account of this can be found on the Director's Cut special features on the DVD. Well, yeah, they're very, they're very, um, very detailed yeah. about what exactly was cut. And when you watch the two versions, as we are going to, well, we're well, we're two we're, 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 uh, <laughs> well if, if I'm not mistaken, we've all seen the theatrical. I have not seen the theatrical. I okay. saw the theatrical thing when it came out, and I thought it was a very mediocre movie. Okay. But yeah, the, the the story of how the movie was cut down is very well detailed in the special features. All right, then. Mm -hmm. uh, was I right? Or... You were correct. All right. And it's not allegedly. <laughs> well, you know, again, in a, in a quest to make an, an actionable podcast, it was allegedly. There we go. Scott supervised the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven, which is 45 minutes longer. I will say more in line with the director's vision. It's said to be a better film all the way around. Kevin would agree. Absolutely. As of this recording, this movie is not streaming anywhere, but you can buy it digitally or rent it digitally on Amazon, Voodoo, Google, and uh, those four. Amazon, Apple, Google, and Voodoo. Physical discs also exist. You know where to get them. Best Buy. Not a sponsor. <sighs> Best Buy. That's why it's terrible. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> unless they want a sponsor. Yeah unless, yeah, unless they want a sponsor us, then, you know, come on. What's up, Best Buy? What's up, Best Buy? Get into the podcast game. So we'll just start off like we always start off. Have you heard this movie? Have you seen it? And if so, where? I will begin. I have seen this movie. I saw it in 2005, I believe, when it came out in the theater when so I was in college. Old? You saw hmm? the, you saw that, the... Is that old? I yeah. It came out in, like, 2011. No. Yeah, Kingdom of no. Heaven? Hell no. Oh. You're well. confusing him with his, uh, the Ridley Scott 2011, I think, was... Uh, what was that one movie that came out a couple years ago? 2011 Ridley Scott? No, nothing came out in 2011. You're crazy. Wait. I, I don't know. Talking about, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. No, we're looking it up. <laughs> so I, thought he made like another, I, thought, yeah, I thought he made, like, some other epic uh, well, he did ex historical... Exodus, Gods, and Kings came out last year. Yeah, that was last year. And then before that, it was... Um, yeah, buh, 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 buh. Why would they do this to me? Uh, Maybe the, a Robin the Counselor. Maybe I think I'm a Robin Hood of like a historical drama. Yeah, like Robin Hood was 2010. Yeah, You're right. Okay. That's right. Prometheus 2012, etc. Counselor 2013. What? Counselor 2013. Yep. Right? All, right. Yep. Hmm. All right. So, saw it in the theater. I thought it was pretty mediocre. I was very excited about it. I feel like the movie had a good trailer, despite what really Scott says. And I saw it in the theater, and I thought it was mediocre. Matt, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I never even heard of it until recently. I didn't even know the movie <laughs> existed. It did uh, kind of come and go. Yeah, it was. It wasn't memorable, really memorable at all. 
Um, I've always been a fan of Ridley Scott. So yeah, Kev, you're a big fan of Ridley I Scott. I like me some Ridley Scott ever since. Unlike our counterparts on the canon, which uh, I believe hate Ridley Scott. Uh, they very much do. So, so Also, so. fuck the canon. Oh, <laughs> podcast <laughs> rivalry. Do it. Kanye. Do it. Uh, Matt, would you like to Ale- add fuel to this fire? Or... Ale- the canon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the show's awful. <laughs> I'm going to say, I mean, it's, it's okay. We're not talking about this. Is not the podcast. About, this is not our podcast. Our future podcast about podcasts. Podcast <laughs> on podcasts. Podcast. Yeah. So I'm gonna write that idea down while you guys. Well, no, Kevin. So really, Scott fan. Yeah. Ever since, um, you know, he was one of the first directors I really started to follow because I watched Blade Runner. I watched Alien when I was really young, and he was one of the first guys that, as I like, had a very distinct style. And he had a very distinct kind of movie he made, even though he made a lot of different types of movies. Because this is the same guy who made. He does. He does. He does have the ability to. You know, he does sci-fi. He does historical fiction. He does. You know, like Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise. He's all over the place. So yeah, it's he was really one of the first. Again, the first guy I really latched onto. So I've been a fan of his a while. And I saw this movie. Uh, I think I saw it on DVD first because. I just never got around to seeing it in theater, although I did want to see it in the theater. And I was very disappointed with it. I felt it was on par with Troy. The movie came out <laughs> a little earlier. Just a very just a very banal by the numbers historical epic uh-huh. that Hollywood kinda of churns out every couple of years. But then I heard about this director's cut and I read all these good reviews about it, so I actually blind bought the director's cut on D V D from from Best Buy. Oh, sponsor of uh, the show. Sponsor. Oh, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> um, and was just absolutely floored by it. It was one of the few instances where they added so much more and it did make the movie that much better. So, as you guys are going to discover when we watch it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Ridley Scott is yeah, yeah, king, king, king of... Talk about Ridley cut. Scott and your thoughts on him. But, I mean, you know, obviously the two movies that I enjoy of his is Blade Runner and Alien. You know, it, it is, he, he, he did sci-fi pretty well and the rest of his movies kind of whatever you know he, he does a lot of director's cut and a lot of times director's cut his vision is better and sometimes where like legend was terrible and the director's cut was not any better and he's made you know gladiator which is you know it's fine and he, he, I, I, his, his early work is good but then as it kind of goes on it's like he doesn't really he, he doesn't be, become like the the visionary he just sort of like i want to make a movie and this is going to be it and it's like nothing really is signature stamp on it other than just you know i think he's kind of one of those working man directors yeah like, he'll find he has the projects that he really cares about and you can tell when he does but there's sometimes like a year goes by and he's bored you make and magic man and script. you're like this is a ridley scott film like it doesn't feel but like magic it. man's a great movie <laughs> right but it doesn't feel like a ridley scott yeah movie. it doesn't feel like but that he just jumps around genres so much that he can kind of do that but there's movies like like Robin Hood, like um, American Gangster, maybe American. Oh, I like American Gangster, but you know, it's maybe he was kind of just needed a script to find really quick and turned out a movie for it. So, yeah, I mean, really, Scott. I mean, you know, I really like Alien. And I really like Blade Runner, and I, uh, you know, and a lot. Of, I've seen a lot of his movies, and, and some of them, like I, I thought Robin Hood was a good movie. I don't think it was a great movie. Yeah, you know, I enjoyed it for what it was. It's one of the few of his that I outright don't like. Interesting. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of people did not react well to that movie. I kind of went in with no expectation. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm familiar with Body of Lies. So to me, he's, he's a very invisible director in a, in, a certain, in, in, in a certain sense of sometimes he comes out with movies and I don't even know that his movies. Like, I didn't know American Gangster was him. And I didn't know he directed Hannibal. I saw that in the theater. Yep. And I, don't, I didn't remember that. Um, but... And he, he does move all around in terms of the genre and, and subject matter. So, I mean, really, Scott, uh, Black Rain, really. Yep. This IMDb Mike, page blew my fucking brain apart. Michael Douglas Mullet, Black Rain. <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> so, yeah, so, really, Scott, to me, I don't think him being involved in this movie takes anything away from it. I don't think, I don't look forward to really Scott movies. I mean, I, I kind of take them all on their own. Exodus and Gods and Kings, that's not really anything I would be interested in, so I didn't want to see it. So he's not, I mean, like, you know, someone like a Tarantino or a Robert Rodriguez, I'd probably seek out their titles just because that's my guy. Yeah. But with Ridley Scott, I think it's on a per title basis. Yeah. And that's because you didn't have the personal connection that I did where it was, he was the first guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a cool name, too. Ridley Scott. It's a pretty epic name. A little trivia. 
if you're video gamers out there, Ridley in Metroid, the main antagonist, is named after Ridley Scott. Oh. Because Alien inspired a lot of the aesthetic. Oh, of yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the yeah. creators very consciously named him Ridley Scott. Also, spoiler alert, Samus is a girl. No. Blew people's mind in 91. It, uh, it did. Just talk of the town. We're like, what? <laughs> also did not know that Vega was a man. Or, yeah. Did not know. <laughs> you know Vega was a man. Vega his, from Street Fighter? His boobs weren't covered up. <laughs> When you're a kid, you know, you're just like, you, you, you see, <laughs> you know, you see like, wait, Vega's a dude? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you all thought Vega was a dude. Wait, 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 So Vega from Street Fighter, which if people don't, are not familiar, Vega's outfit is, if from top to bottom, he has a long braided ponytail, which, okay, that, he, in child logic, maybe a long braided ponytail means girl. Wearing a mask. So tight he, pants. You can't see the thing. Not tight pants. He's wearing pantaloons. He's wearing pantaloons. I don't, I don't know if I agree with the, it's pants. I think he's wearing more... pantaloons, high socks, and boots, and then uh, I just, I was, I was, has no chest. He is his chest is completely uncovered, and he has a six pack. Well, it's flat. I mean, when I was pectorals. like six, I didn't really understand the concept of boobs. So of course, I was like lost on me. So I'm like, as a, a girl. All right, we're getting off topic here. <laughs> Vega, the... Ridley from Metroid is the <laughs> <for> Ridley Scott. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Vega is a dude. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Let's talk about historic action movies. Is this a genre that's interesting to you guys? And I'll give you some, some examples here. Robin Hood, Gladiator, Braveheart, King Arthur, Ben-Hur, Exodus, Gods and Kings. These are historical action movies. You like your history with your action? Peanut butter and chocolate or peanut butter and fish? What? I don't know. I like historical action because uh, it gives you a context of which the story takes place and a, an idea of the how the movie's going to feel and play out. Like when you have Ben-Hur, you have a story between someone who's like a Catholic or Christian or whatever, same thing. And then... So, <laughs> no! For this, almost as a purpose as they I are the same... I strongly disagree. For this podcast, they're the same thing. Uh, and then like a Jewish person... I think this, this is the podcast where Matt loses his mind. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But it gives, it gives, you, it gives you context... Um, to which to, to play the story out so it, it, it is interesting to see how that goes it doesn't need to be rooted in fact it could be more interesting if it's if there is if liberties taken to which, a certain, ex- which to a certain is, extent it is in this movie to but... a certain extent where it's like okay if there was like spaceships and you know replicants running around and uh, the crusades I mean it'd be a great movie but I mean it would be kind of weird or so. if somebody said, oh, motherfucking shit right That'd or it's like <laughs> did they really talk like that back in the uh, 12th century uh, we don't know uh, my take, this is one genre where I have a very case-by-case basis. Uh-huh. It's really not a blanket like, oh, I love historical action movies. Like, I like my Arnold Schwarzenegger action movies. You know, there's good ones and bad ones, but overall I like it. Historical action, it's very movie-by-movie movie for me. If It needs to have a good... I think what happens is a lot of them, they get caught up in just like, oh, we're telling this big historical story, and they forget the characters. And I think the ones that have really strong central characters and a very human story set within a big historical environment are the ones that work well. Is accuracy, historic accuracy important to you? Uh, to a to a point. Like, like Matt was saying, if spaceships show up or if somebody drives a car or something like that, you know, not that, not that that happens in those movies, but, you know, if it's not completely egregious, I really don't mind. Interesting. I feel like I this is not a genre that I'm like a, a particularly like conscious fan. If you listen to our previous episodes, you know that I'm a horror fan and no. fan of many a horror subgenre. Get out, really? <laughs> Get out of town. <laughs> so I, I would say that actively this is not like a genre that I look forward to, but you know, I do end up watching a lot of these movies. I think I've seen every movie in that list of examples I've given. It's not it's it's not something that I like consciously love. In terms of accuracy, I think that uh there's 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 a literal truth, right? Did this guy do this thing when this how? But then there's also like an emotional truth of what you're trying to explore. And I think that's what this movie is about, from my recollection of it, is trying to explore, you know, when with something like a crusade's going on, like what's the reality of being involved in that? You know what I mean? Like you're fighting a war that, in you know, one could argue, not to make it political, but one could argue that you're always fighting someone else's war. You're very rarely ever fighting your own war. So this guy finds himself... You know, going over to Jerusalem and defending that and taking that city and defending it from conquest, but you know, is that his? Is that really of something that is important to him? 
And maybe that's not exactly how that particular character whose name I can't really pronounce. Bailey. Yeah, it's not, that's not Bailey because that's a literal person. Maybe that's not his literal story, but is there an emotional truth to that story? You know what I mean? I don't know. Something that I kind of go back and I oscillate back and forth on. Yeah. Moving on to Orlando Bloom. Mm. Mm. What do you guys think about Orlando Bloom? Um, he's kind of just I don't want to say vanilla, but he's 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 easy on the eyes and he's competent enough in doing his lines and his acting, but he doesn't really have a lot beyond that. I don't think he has this like gritty personality like that like what Russell Crowe brought to Gladiator, something like that. Mm. The energy intensity. No, um, I mean he's 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 alright. I think he's a decent actor. You know, he 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 does he does his action well. Uh, if he's doing other things, any sort of romantic uh, comedy or romantic kind of like fair, it's it's whatever. But... So for the record, then you guys are both saying you're not a fan of Elizabeth Town. That movie <laughs> can't say I saw it. Pure garbage. You see it? No, I'm just gonna go ahead and speak a generalization saying it's pure garbage. <laughs> right. Because I Matt can't. Matt never meant something that he didn't prejudge the take. <laughs> <laughs> Name of the game. Generalizations judging without saying uh, done. Unsubstantiated right. rumors are good enough to base my life on. <laughs> exactly. If the also I don't like Cameron Crow. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about a fucking Elizabeth Town. I regret making that joke. I don't I don't regret making that joke at all. Go ahead. You were saying that Orlando Bloom Yeah, yeah I, I I'd say he's a decent actor. I'm going to say, coming off the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, or not, not the movies, the first one, I was very hot on Orlando Bloom and then also Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I thought, like, oh, this guy's going to be cool. I don't think he's really lived up to expectations. I don't think he's ever gotten a chance. But I, I agree with that. I don't think he's ever really gotten a chance. I did see Elizabeth Town, by the way, and that movie is terrible. I'm not going to say that's his fault, though. Uh, so, yeah, Orlando Bloom, I don't know. I... I don't. I wouldn't. He he's not going to prevent me from seeing a movie, but he's also not enough of a star to really make me see anything. Yeah. But what do we think about Liam Neeson, who is also in this movie? I mean, Liam Neeson's fantastic, even before his late career renaissance as an action star. As a sixty-five-year-old action star, which you know, hey, he's doing good, dude. At it. <laughs> dude, no one's ever done it, and maybe no one else will ever he's do it. He's doing it better than everybody else. But he he yeah. he is the most over action star. In the world, and I love every second of it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, no, no, nothing but praise for Liam Neeson, you know. And, and also, like, by owning it, he he is, like, you know, like, you could describe movies as, like, Taken on a blank. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, famously he was in Taken, but then there's, like, uh, he was in Nonstop. Like, famously is, he was in a lot of other things. <laughs> no, 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 but, yeah, yeah, but he, his, his renaissance right now is being yeah. an action star. An action star. So he, there's movies that are ripoffs of Taken, but he's in them. Yeah. And he's it, he's in nonstop, which is taken on a plane, and he's killing it. And it's just like you know, he was in that w- movie with, where he's trapped in Alaska or whatever. The Gray. The Gray, which, which is, I, I would argue it doesn't fit in his genre. Oh, his, like, his I would say that in some ways it's taken in Alaska, but it's amazing. But so, yeah. I love Liam Neeson. Yeah, with Liam Neeson, because you you have someone who already started off as a great actor. And then you're putting him in other things, so it's like he's going to bring greatness to those movies. So it's going to elevate that action movie to like mm-hmm. a level versus taking like a mm-hmm. a person who's normally like an action star, like a you know Vin Diesel or Rocker. People are just like, we're you're an action guy, so we're going to put you in an action movie, but you're not really your 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 acting range isn't going to be as deep and as uh, you know varied as Liam Neeson. So he adds a level to it that is more interesting. Yeah. So I mean, he was in the A Team movie, which for all intents and purposes had no right to be good at all. Which movie? A Team. Oh, the eighteen. Yeah, they made, they, they made like the eighteen. The, the, the eighteen. No, no, the eighteen. Yes. They, and after that, that movie had no right to be good, right? But that movie is fucking awesome, he's dude. Fun. So fun. That's what, that's what they found out in it. And he's a fun, even though, even when he's being serious, it's always so fun. And I don't know, dude. I just love. Lego, I think, Lego I think Lego we're movie. all saying we all love the movie. What Lego movie? Critics, oh my god, Lego movie. Critics knock the eighteen. They're like, oh, it's unrealistic. And I was the, like, no fuck shit. Fucking dumb. Yeah, yeah, it's the eighteen. Yeah. yeah, bro. Just shoot the ground. There was never. <laughs> there was never one second in that movie where it was like this is gonna be a realistic action movie it's yeah. like this is always gonna be ridiculous does anyone have any thoughts on Eva Green who is another star of this movie um she's really good if, if you if for for anyone who doesn't not as familiar with Eva Green she was in Casino Royale Sin City 2 302 a couple other movies that I can't think of right and now and an interesting film called The Dreamers oh, oh the Bert- Bertolucci yes. movie I never saw that but uh She's uh, very strong in that movie. Very strong. So. Okay, so yeah, I've, I've never seen. I've only thing I've seen of her, and it was Sensei Two. I didn't really like that. So 
I don't really don't know much about Great it, really. in Casino Royale as the Bond girl. Yeah, I feel like she's she's good. She's always good. Even if the movie's not good. Yeah. She's always good. She's got this grit and this fire in her eyes. That's and, really And kind of like as an actress, I mean like and not to be crass here, but she does appear nude in a lot of movies. And she kind of and she owns it, which I think is very like like fucking yeah, own it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you're going to do it, you know, don't apologize. There's a controversy with Sin City with a poster where it's like she's too nude and and her reaction was like, "Fuck you guys." You know what I mean? What do you you know like could be could be babies about this? And I'm like, she, "Yeah, dude." She's European, which has a very different view on nudity yeah, yeah, than yeah. the yeah. United States yeah. does. So, so I, I respect Eva Green, and I, and uh, we'll see we'll see what I think about her in this director's cut. I think this is her finest performance. Whoa, whoa! She, she, yeah, you'll you'll see. You'll see. Right. We'll talk about. It. Bold statements, but I like it. Going for bold, Matt. Her best performance, hey, you think? The I've only seen her one movie, and it was hey, so it has to be that. <laughs> it has to be that by default. It, one of the I tag, guess she was good in it. One of the taglines for King of Heaven was "Fortune favors the bold." Ooh, so be bold, be bold. All right, so let's. Uh, you, such a fan of this movie, you know the ta- the various taglines. <laughs> that, uh, that's a you know this time it's a famous personal. philosopher's club. We're, we're gonna keep this rapid fire short. Because this movie is very long. <laughs> I think it's two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, it's longer than that. <laughs> I always thought it was like a four-hour movie. It's, it pushes four hours. No what? way. No. This is, this Holy is what, shit. You said, in, we said 45 minutes, but on top two, of what, though? I guess four or three hours. Two hours and 15 minutes? <laughs> this is like Lawrence of Arabia territory. Oh, like, oh, it's, it's a long movie. Yeah, so we're going to keep this short. You didn't know what you were signing up for, did you? Right. Nope. <laughs> but it's okay. I know, I don't, don't want to give this movie a shot, because it's... I remember seeing again. I remember seeing the trailer and thinking this is going to be cool, and it was so so. So, it, you know, if it's a good movie, the thing is a four hour, a good four hour movie is better than the worst one and a half hour movie. So, rapid fire. Here we go. Liam Neeson, badass or smartass? Badass. 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 And Orlando Bloom, Legolas or Will Turner? Legolas. Will Turner. Oh man. I'm going to say Will Turner from the first yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean and Legolas from the third Lord of the Rings movie. I think he's good in all the Lord of the Rings movies. And Hobbit? Yeah, he was good. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he, he, he was not the issue with the Hobbit he, he, trilogy. All right. Ridley Scott, sci-fi or history? Ooh. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. I'm going to go sci-fi as well. Yeah. Fuck, Mary kill. Gladiator, Troy, and King Arthur. Troy's a city, not a person. <laughs> it's not, it's, we're not talking about cities, how we're talking about movies. What? Right, uh, <laughs> this doesn't make any I'm sense. Gonna fuck Gladiator, as in, like, have beautiful sex with Gladiator. Yes. Oh, uh, the actual Ma- movie, the physical movie. Yeah. Not not the disc, motherfucker. Like the the concept <laughs> the of the movie is okay. <laughs> this is too. This is too bizarre. I feel like no one is confused about this except for you because you're listing Gladiator, which is a person, technically a person. Uh, Troy, a city. Oh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Glad, <laughs> Gladiator is not a pro. In, in the way you're using Gladiator is not a proper noun. Gladiator is a title. A, a person would be a gladiator, so it is a common noun. So, Gladiator is not one singular person. Gladiator is what a person could be, first of all. Troy is <laughs> well, a city. You're two types of people, and you're listing a city, so it makes... It's, I'm, I'm really confused here. <laughs> okay. Fine. I get it. I get it. You're, t- you're talking about the concept of the movie. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> Kevin? Yes. So, fuck Gladiator, as in have beautiful sex with Gladiator. Marry Troy, because it's inoffensive. And kill King Arthur, because it's terrible. Do, would you like to go second, Matt, or would you like to go third? Uh, I've not seen the latter two, <laughs> so I don't know what they're really the See? point of them are. Troy, well, Troy's about a, a, a it's about the siege of Troy. Siege of Tro- with Helena Troy. Yeah. Oh, did you did earlier in the podcast you said Troy sucked and it was a very mediocre movie? I never said that. That was me. Oh, you said that. I said it. <laughs> all right, all right, I've all right. Never all seen right. Troy. I, all right, all right. The, King the, Arthur. I mean, the theatrical cut of King Arthur. I'm gonna shake your hand, Kev. I apologize. I apologize, Matt. I apologize. Okay, King, I was wrong and King Arthur. I was. Was there anything special about King Arthur except for he? Matt, the round, round the question table? is: Mary fuck kill. Uh, all right, these fine. three movies. Fine. Uh, fuck uh, King Arthur. Mary Gladiator. Kill Troy. Okay, I'm gonna fuck Troy. Mary King Arthur. Kill Gladiator. Wow. Yep. Damn yep. Right. All right. <laughs> now that we've gotten past that, okay. sword and sandals or history and action? History and action. History and action. 
Sword and sandals. So, what does that mean? Like, sword like, and sandals is like Conan, you know, like fantasy horror, like, like, fantasy history. Like, I love me some Conan, like Barbara. Jason and the Argonauts, and yeah, 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 the Seventh Voyage of Seven Seas, is, ah, whatever the Sinbad movie was. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. All right, last question, and then we'll get into this goddamn five-hour movie. <laughs> Sweetened iced tea or unsweetened iced tea? No iced tea. Whoa! Don't, what? Do not like iced tea. You don't like iced tea? No. Sweet iced tea. I like sweet iced tea. I'm gonna go with unsweetened iced tea. Blew my mind right there. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna be I... thinking about this through all the slow parts of this movie. Kevin <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like iced tea. <laughs> what do, you don't like iced tea? I, I really don't. I, like, don't I don't find it refreshing. Like... All right, man. I mean, I feel like that. I feel like I want to say, like, you know, try some good iced tea. But maybe I have. Maybe I just haven't had good iced tea. All right. Get yourself a Lipton Brisk nope. in a can. <laughs> nope. Nope. Delicious. Nope. Nope. Or a Nest tea. A Nest tea. No. Nest tea. No. Gross. A, a pouch of Nest tea dust. You could do that. <laughs> it's not terrible. All right, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Yes, we certainly are. All right. So normally I'd ask, you know, now that we've seen Kingdom of, Kingdom of Heaven director's cut, I'd ask us uh, where you were when you saw it, but we all just saw it together here at my apartment. Yes. And, and at the table we normally jibber jabber around. Uh, a mere feet from our jibber jabbering location. We uh, I would I would argue it's zero feet, seeing how true. this couch and we this, uh, there. And this t- coffee table are unmoved from the, the last and time. And the TV is mere feet right. from the jibber jabbers. Box. So we all watch it together. Kevin's Blu-ray copy. Yes. Good good quality. I would say it was a good quality. Oh yeah, they, they did a good job on that transfer. Hard to believe this movie's ten years old. That it is. It does. It does look. And we'll get into that. I'm glad you brought that up. But we'll get into that in a second. But does yeah. anyone want to summarize this movie? Do you think that's what, you want to? Anyone want to give it a shot? Look, looking at Kevin here, I, I will definitely. I will give a, a brief summary of it because this is a very, like all great historical epics, it's a multi-layered plot. But the basic story is that um, Orlando Bloom plays Balian, who is a blacksmith in France, and he, um, I believe it's France. I'm pretty sure it's France. This well, it's, yeah, sure. We'll, it's call, we'll call it France. It doesn't fucking matter. It's in you know it, during the time of the Crusades, his wife has just committed suicide. Because oh, really? their baby died. Oh. What? <laughs> Did you watch this movie? <laughs> I, oh my god! I might have oh fallen this. No, I, I, I saw the flashback and she was happy, but I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't catch that. They were bur- yeah. they were burying. I know they were burying. I know she died. I thought she like died of some. Well, she died of some sickness. We'll, give, know, we'll fucking... give Matt the razzmatazz in a minute. Kevin, finish your story. <laughs> during it was during the dinner scene. They described like she lost her baby. She went crazy. She killed herself. Also, the the very first shot of the movie is them talking about it. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So, and then uh, a group of crusaders led by Godfrey, who's played by Liam Neeson, come into town, and God uh, Balian is actually Godfrey's bastard son, and Godfrey recruits him to go to Jerusalem on their crusade, and um, Balian goes with them, and gets entrenched into the Jerusalem life, and gets caught up in the Muslim. Christian conflict that has raged for thousands of years and continues to rage on to this day. Very political, yes. Does anyone want to talk about what they thought about this movie? Uh, since I picked it, <laughs> I'll go first. All right. Um, I think this director's cut is a great historical epic. I think it's extremely well paced. Has a good um, story that really explores a lot of different facets of religion, and I think it's. Really well shot, well edited, well acted, and is one of Ridley Scott's better films. And an example of, um, it's vastly better than the theatrical cut because the the characters are much more fleshed out and the themes are given a lot more room to breathe. And I think it really is going to stand the test of time as a great historical epic. Interesting. Better than Troy and uh, Alexander, the other two. Yes. Uh, it so kinda, historical it kinda, epics of the of the, the early don't forget King, don't forget King Arthur don't forget no you said Troy don't forget three hundred true so <laughs> that, kinda... that that movie was completely historically accurate but back to this movie <laughs> Matt you want to weigh in yeah I thought it was an interesting movie not having seen the original which apparently 
cut out the entire subplot of the boy. Which I, I, I wouldn't have... So we, so we should say, there's in this movie, there's a, a whole subplot where Eva Green is the princess of Jerusalem? Or queen of Jerusalem? Princess of Jerusalem. Well, she's the... Duke? The king, she's the king's sister. So whatever that makes you. So, yeah. So, and she has a son who is going to be the next heir to the kingdom. Uh, and he... So we set him up, and, you know, everyone likes him or whatever, and then he turns out he has leprosy. Yes, which is father... Or, the the king, current king played it up. Da, da, da. The current king played by Edward Norton has, and it eventually kills him. The son rises to the throne, and then it's discovered after he has been anointed the king that he has leprosy. And then she kills him. And she kills her own him. son. Yes. Poison in the air. Class. And class that son. entire <laughs> subplot was cut out of the theatrical version. Yeah, because my memory of the theatrical version was yeah, basically he gets to Jerusalem and then it's like it's going to be invaded. Yeah. Or, or, and I think, I think in that joke cut to my memory, it is the redheaded guy's fault. Yeah, there's definitely no uh, political jibber jabber going yeah. on, Matt. Okay. Well, I thought it was a very interesting movie. I enjoyed it. I think that the subplot with the kid, what did it seem a little extraneous? I think if you cut it out, it was someone made it for a good movie, maybe not as great as. Uh, it could be, but I just don't think it would make for a great movie. Otherwise, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was Interesting. sweeping, epic, great visuals, great acting. So your homework will be to uh, to watch the theatrical cut and tell us if you think it's better. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> this movie is definitely better than my memory of the theatrical cut, which I had said before I had seen in the theater. It's very epic. It looks great. I don't think it sounds very good. I, th- I did not like the score at all. Really? I feel like they every time an uh, emotional scene came in, they just underpinned it with this score, and it was just like... I fucking know what's happening, all right? Score, we don't need to... Yeah, score written by Harry Gregson Williams. I feel like the score became a form of exposition. It was just not like, Ridley Scott's usual mm-hmm. collaborator. It's usually on Zimmer, so... He was busy doing a million different yeah, things. Exactly. Too busy bang, banging those bongos <laughs> intensely for uh, yep. Christopher Nolan. None of that sound. But... So I didn't like... I didn't love the score. I felt the score is very heavy-handed. But I, I did like it. I don't fully connect with this movie, and this, this is, I'm ready for this to be a bizarro... Criticism, so if judgment. I, I that's wait. why we're here. I, uh, I know it's called Kingdom of Heaven, but the fact that everyone keeps fucking talking about God all the time, I really, really started to drain on me around hour two. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, everyone is like, God be with you. Whatever happens is because of God, blah, blah, blah. And I just feel like after a while, I was just like, oh my God. Which is every theme in the movie ties to. It does. God's and it's religion. totally on point. It's just, that's my divorce from this movie where it's just like, that's why I have not seen the social network as of yet. Because I just can't watch a fucking movie about Facebook. And I know it's not about Facebook. It's about all kinds of different shit. It's backstabbing shit. That's great. right. But. I don't want to hear anyone talk about Facebook. I don't give a fuck. And the same thing here. I, was like, I don't want to. I don't want to hear Dum Dum's opinions about God. But see, I now I'm gonna go on record. I'm an atheist, and I love this film. Right. So, and I think it just explores religion in a really. It looks at all the facets of it, and I think it's ultimately. I don't want to say an anti-religious movie, but I think it's a very agnostic film. And I, I do ba- agree. With Balian's that. character is very agnostic and goes to lengths to prove like. It's not about these books that were written millions of years ago. It's about the people and like that's what's going who, on today. Exactly, what's going on. Now. That's who he cares about. Yeah. Is you know, I, he does. He doesn't care what Jerusalem stands for. Really, he cares about the people that live in it, are in it, and he will sacrifice it in order to save their lives and not shed any more blood for no reason. Right, and all the good good guy quote unquote characters in this movie, which would include Balian and his friends, and then who all get killed. And then also the leader of the Islamic army, whose name escapes me, the, the you know Salah, Salah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> yeah he's he's we'll a good guy. Salah. He's a good guy too. I mean, Salah. he doesn't want war. You know what I mean? But he lives. Everyone lives in this political thing. Before we before we get too big in this, Matt, would you like to out your political your uh, religious underpinning here? Or? Out it? I Kevin freely admits he's an atheist, so you want? Oh, I don't. Yeah, you, you want to? You want to jump in here? To the, or, yeah, or I don't. No I, I don't. I, I don't believe in in any form of religion. So I, I guess. So I, you're I, a spiritual person. I do worship the sun. <laughs> that is any consolation. Pra- praise be it's by You do. Have you yeah, ever? Shit, yeah. I mean, so you when everything. you when you sacrifice a chicken, do you feel like it really gets you uh, a good rain that season, or no? Uh, two chickens. Two chickens. I've been doing it wrong. That's uh, why we got plague and pestilence. 
Sacrificing that do, chicken wrong. Do we have plague and pestilence? We have a bit of a drought, but... <laughs> That's been going on for, what, like, 100 years now? Who cares? <laughs> Better do four chickens. Okay. Four, yeah. four chickens. Up your, up your chicken sure. game. <laughs> <laughs> to ensure a good rainfall. Hey, we've been getting some good rainfall, sort of. Ish. Yeah. For LA. <laughs> for LA. I'm sure everyone is riveted by whenever... <laughs> back on track here. Uh, yeah. Back on track. I do like how the movie... It's like a... There's a it basically, it's talking about the politics of religion, and in, in this scenario, the politics of religion are mixed within the politics of war and countries and various things like that. You know what I mean? And there's an interesting thing. This is a, another another reason why Bailey, I don't connect with the character of Bailey completely, uh, is that he, his father, who comes back, and to the movie's credit, the guy's father comes back, says, you're my kid, let me teach you how to do some shit, and that doesn't feel hella dumb. Because it's like, dude, I live like, you know, Bailey's probably 30 at this point, maybe. Like, he's, he's already a veteran of war. It's like, hey, you're my dad. Thanks. Well, you know, thanks that you weren't here all this time. Yeah. So, but they really handled that well. So kudos to that. In terms of, like, the political story, he's trying to be agnostic politically. He doesn't want to, like, rock the boat too much, which I find frustrating because it's like, no, dude, like, kill the redheaded guy, kill Guy. Fuck those dudes. Those dudes are the worst. You know what I mean? He's like, no. In the end, you don't like his pursuit to be like the pure knight. No, I don't. Because okay. I feel like I'm more of the Batman mindset, where you gotta sometimes you gotta bust some skulls to fucking get sure. to fix the city. You know what I mean? And um, I do think that jumping to the end really quick, he in this cut he spares Guy's life, which I feel like is a mistake. Like that guy is a harmful person to everyone that he's around. He is. Someone who has power but doesn't know how to use it to help anyone. So to leave him alive lets that happen again. Also, you want to marry his chick. So, I mean, he has to be dead so you can do it. Sure. Uh, I don't sweet, recommend... Sweet Ava Green. Yes, well, Ava Green, Mary. Uh, I also would like to add, and this is a complete off topic, but it, when they try to uggo Ava Green up by cutting her hair short, she still looks like a million bucks. Sure. Movies. <laughs> movies. I thought, <laughs> movies. I thought it was one no, no, to write her for a sec. They gave her that. Oh, when you first saw her? When I was you... like, wait, is that Winona? Did they just replace her with Winona Ryder? No, I'm joking. Obviously, I knew it was her. But she did look like Winona Ryder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm like, what? Grown. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to say anything about this movie? Or um, things, themes that you like, things you picked up on, storytelling? Do I do really like how this whole movie looks legit. It never feels like this is on a studio. It never feels yeah, like exactly. we're in a location. It feels like... They found an ancient Sumerian city and shot a movie in it. The scope of this movie is massive. Right. Like, not even... You know, Ridley is really one of the first... Well, not not the first filmmakers, but he's really... Makes these big, sweeping landscapes. This one is just, like Smokey said, it's big, but it feels really natural. Like, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of CGI, or it's, you know, on a back lot somewhere. I do want to talk about some of the CGI effects and some other things. That, that could be for, for the nitpick. Is it a nitpick or is it something we can get into here? I mean, we want to talk about the excessive use of the shitty slow-mo. Where they, okay. The, the post-slow-mo. I want, I'm so fucking happy you said this. I don't even call that CGI. But no, that, no, but there, there was there were some effects, like the arrow effects look really dodgy. Let's, let's start with the CGI, because I got a lot to fucking say about this. I keep in mind this movie is 10 years old. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they didn't invent the slow motion 10 years ago. <laughs> right now, there are cameras, and not, not, not that this is serious camera jibber-jabber, but there are cameras that exist, like the Phantom, which do lots of slow motion very, very well on a cinematic level, yeah. and look goddamn gorgeous. Clearly, that camera was not created when this movie was made. That's fine. Well, however, they chose to make those shots slow mode, not having shot them at a higher frame yeah, rate. Right, in, which looks like dog shit. It, I <laughs> fucking hate that look. Aesthetically, I think that is the cheesiest, lamest. Just like, oh my god, they, that is, is grown worthy. It's an, it's an afterthought that they do because they realize, oh shit, oh, we, this should we, we, we shot we shot a twenty four instead of shooting at, it, you know. Uh, two hundred or whatever. I don't have to go two hundred, but you can know you can. Well, you, you, if you want, you, if you want nice slow mode, nice slow mode is like from like two to four hundred. Right, yeah. but if you want to just, Ugh. but they're but they're doing it after the fact. So that's you know, I looks hate it. Like totally, I hate garbage. it. I hate in the sex scene. It was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god! They did that sex scene. They did it in all of the battles and the movie because the movie is so crisp and like every frame of the movie is like there's just like, like just vivid colors and yeah. vivid everything which and is you, great for a historical epic because I feel a lot of those are really washed out 
right. boring, drab colors. Right. This and, movie is very vibrant. And depending on where they are, right? When they're in France, everything is very blue. When they're in the desert, everything is very yellow and orange. And they they really... You could tell they really thought some time on that. And it just looks like fucking terrible. Terrible. Yeah, it, it takes you out of the movie. Because when you're watching it... I you, don't you get, usually you get, agree with that sentence. Takes you out of the movie. In this case, I absolutely agree with that. But, I hated it. But when, when, the, when, the, when the slow-mo is not absolute garbage it, you, you are actually totally engrossed the, and you feel like you're, you're in the movie instead right. of just being a, a yeah. right and the fight observer. scenes and the fight scenes were really good I have a, a couple of little nitpicks I do think the fight scene okay so what's uh, Kev you want to talk about the slow motion or before we move on to the fight scenes or? Um, it doesn't take me out as much just cause Ridley uses that a lot in his movies so I'm just kinda used to like that's really yeah, uh, the only special effect that really kinda comes out of me every time is when Jerusalem's getting bombarded and they kind of add a shaky cam to it. I did not notice that. I see think that, I'm immune to shaky cam. Well, I just, you can tell it's kind of been <laughs> I blocked out that, I blocked that shaky so. cam. Okay. But, you guys had a, uh, sorry, going back to Starry Eyes, you guys hated the shaky cam with that and I didn't even notice it. What you're talking about was when Something an impact happens and then you you see like exactly yeah, yeah I, it's, I, it's like, not, oh yeah it's no, not I noticed that. that 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 was not that was not I so like high. that I don't know I didn't mind okay. I I don't say I like that I just notice it yeah that's the only special effect in this movie that really bothers me mm-hmm. so other than that I think everything like I said very crisp nothing really stands out to me in a like distracting way mm-hmm. and it's just an incredibly well shot well framed well directed film let's go to the fights real quick yeah. so. Normally in this era of the quote unquote sword and fight and sword fights, Lord of the Rings, etc., etc., <laughs> you don't get any blood. And I'm not saying I'm not gonna say that it annoys me, but I do wish that they would make more adult things. This movie is that where people get bludgeoned and there's blood and there's blood gets on you know like someone there's a scene where Orlando Bloom cuts a dude's neck and it gets all over a horse and the other guy mm-hmm. and just really good with stuff with blood but I, and, and they go really far there's some really horrific deaths like and when they execute the dude in the forest with the war hammer with the yeah. war hammer and it goes right to his skull it's just like fuck you yeah. know what I mean but sometimes I wish they went even further I want like lone wolf and cub shit you know what I mean right. it's like, you, you want some shogun assassin I want some shogun assassin I want some I wanted more heads getting cut off I want some more arms being mangled I want someone to get trampled by a horse they they do try to make it tasteful, and I think at the expense of really making that a juicy hamburger. All right, um, I buy that. I do. I think you need to exercise some restraint when you're dealing with that because if you, it can get too cartoony and too goofy if your heads are rolling and slicing and dicing. Hey man, like, slicing and dicing. Like it works in a movie like Shogun Assassin, where the blood sprays in these great geysers of things. Oh, so well, I don't movie's... think we'll ever be able to convince Matt to do Shogun Assassin, but for anyone out there listening, me and Kev vouch. Shogun Assassin. That is a, a fine piece of work. <laughs> that is a, <laughs> it's just a fucked up movie. But it's so good. <laughs> it's so great. Go ahead. But yeah, the violence in this is very brutal. It's very medieval. and um, I do like that. And yeah, it's like you really feel the impact of every kind of sword hit, and you, you know, every you know, we were all wincing at some of the slices that these guys get, and yeah, the leprosy, Ugh. yeah, yes. leprosy, <laughs> very gross. Well, we'll get, let's get to the, we'll get to the yeah. leprosy and the whole Edward Norton character in one second. But there's a one there's one point I think towards the end where they slice a dude and he like gets cut like diagonally halfway through. Do, do you guys remember that? See that know. cut. Which guy was that? I don't know. It's yeah. I think some random dude in a battle. Is it in the the final battle? I think so. Okay. They cut him and he, and he basically it goes in the center of his chest and it goes out his shoulder and he's kind of oh, starts yeah, to yeah, peel yeah, apart. Yeah. Okay. I was like, get him! It's like those, get him! Those swords were big. They were made out of steel and they could cut you like a motherfucker. Which and that takes me back to uh, Balian, the Orlando Bloom's character, where he he's so politically neutral, but he's willing to kill people, which I just feel like doesn't really. Doesn't just they don't it's it's connected but it's it's like the connection isn't great you know what I mean or it, he's willing to kill people even before the city goes under siege he's willing to kill people yep. but he's not he kills his but he won't he won't come onto one side or another of a political debate or something you know what I mean true I can buy that a little bit okay. so let's oh, go ahead. again I just think it's his yeah pursuit of being the pure knight but um yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get. To, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the pure night thing. Sure. Uh, we're gonna do th- this is the first and last time we're gonna do this segment on the show. Talking leprosy talk. <laughs> Let's talk leprosy. 
uh, you wait. brought it, you brought it up, Matt. Yeah, I mean, he's wearing his eyes wide shut mask and just peeling apart. I will say <laughs> I'm a fan of masks. Big fan of Lucha Libre. He was Big a fan goofy. of slasher movies. No, I liked it. I liked it. If you're, well, fa- you're well, face- he's, he's, he's he's talking and he's interacting, but you just see a kind of a wiggle of a body as he kind of like can't really see what I'm doing because it's audio. But he's yeah. He's kind of- I, for the people at home, <laughs> just rest assured, Matt was wiggling his body like a uh, like a little inchworm. Yes, but you were saying that was it. I want to <laughs> throw out a couple things with you know Edward Norton played this character, and another movie that has a main character in a mask is V for Vendetta. That has Hugo Weaving as that. And I think you can really tell when a great actor is behind a mask. Like, they can do more with it. Like, they didn't have to hire those guys. But, you know, you could just stick stuck anybody in that mask and done a voiceover with it. But I think they really did bring good performance moments to it. Susie Norton br- br- brought it out. Yeah, I okay. think he did. So, yeah, I, I think so too. I really liked. Again, I really you liked. Can see it in his eyes. Yeah, 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 I think. I really liked masks in movies. I really liked the idea of like mask whatevers. You know what I mean? But it's a cool. I feel like they they did it really well. He has his is his normal flat mask. I'm gonna call it the the shiny flat mask, which is just like a his, a metal his, mask his with a goatee. His everyday mask. His everyday mask. And then he has this fancy one that he drives out on his horse that has a, a lot of engraving in it, which I thought was cool. And I feel like they paid it off. I mean, when the when the Eva Green takes the mask off after he's dead, and you see his face, and it looks like a fucked up like monstery pig. Yep. And it's like, yeah, if you look like that too, you'd have to wear a mask. You know what I mean? You can't walk around. You know what I mean? Like, and they really that kind of ties into the theme of like, you know, belief versus reality. Because they always talked about he was such a beautiful boy, and he said, you know, you're a beautiful woman, a beautiful girl. And the reality was he was this very twisted, ugly thing. Mm-hmm. But, she puts the mask back on, and that's sort of how right. she remembers, and go, tries to make herself pretty much ugly, I think, ties into that. Right. Is that she... Which she fails at because she's a gorgeous woman. Exactly. It's it's Ava Green. She's right. gorgeous. But, um... And I also like how... I mean, I, I do like it when the bad guy wears a mask, because, you know, it's cool. Like, yeah. Darth Vader. Fucking, it's fucking awesome. This, ca- this character has... He is a pure character. He is only a good guy. He's There's no malice or whatever, So and he's wearing a mask. I feel like you don't... You don't really see that ever, you know what I mean, in a movie where a guy wearing a mask isn't hiding someone, ooh, symbolism, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, in this case, he's just wearing the mask. I'm talking over this plane. <laughs> the plane will not silence me. I wish he, I, I kind of prefer the Dark Man uh, face mask thing, if he had that. I don't get that reference. Dark Man, Dark he, Man. he's got the bandages, bandages over his face. Hold for Directed by Google. Sam Raimi. I'm just saying, if they had that over his face instead of uh, 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 a golden or a silver mask, that would be a lot cooler. But, I mean, but he's a king. But he's though. a king, though. He oh, has, Dark Man. Yeah, he yeah, has yeah, to yeah, be yeah, presented yeah. as. Oh, Dark Man is also Liam Neeson. Yeah, Liam Neeson. Tying it all together, if. Also, I was eagerly, eagerly awaiting Liam Neeson to pull out some taken dialogue, but as that movie came out this 10 is, years before. This is pre taken. <laughs> but wrong, if, there's, uh, <laughs> if there's somehow they got it into it, I would have very much liked that. But, you know, wait, what can you do? And also, what, shout, what can you do? Shout, Nothing. Shout Liam Neeson, not in this movie very much, makes a strong impact. That's the thing. Is Stop billing. Everyone in this movie does really... Again, and you never feel like, oh, this is Liam Neeson being Liam Neeson, or this is Edward Norton being Edward Norton, or this is Eva Green being... It's like everyone feels like their respective character. You yeah. know what I mean? It, you never... You never I, I personally never felt like we're in a movie other than the shitty slow-mo, fake and fake <laughs> slow-mo scenes, which drove me nuts. But everything else, I feel like, was really selling you on these things being real. Right. There's we, a... Oh, God. Oh, I was going to say, it, it, it's good that they're using names and recognized faces because you get a movie... There's like a lot that. of fucking people in this movie. Yeah, uh, and... and uh, a stacked in, cast. In medieval times... <laughs> there's... Medieval times, okay. Um, come on. You, you, I gave the reference to the the, the, I thought the have, stage show and restaurant. I thought it would have more of an impact. I guess it didn't. But when you have all those people who will essentially look the same, just bearded, rugged yeah, looking people, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's to, to differentiate. So I, mm-hmm. I liked, that's the one time where I think that using a star-studded cast worked in their favor. Versus, Was it an ensemble? Ensemble. Yeah. Versus when you have a star in a movie and it takes you out of the experience. But everyone sold it, so it was good. Yeah, it's good. 
So I do think this is a good movie. Do you want to talk? I mean, I feel like we we talk a lot about shitty slow motion and fight scenes. Do you want to talk you more? Talk about the, a lot about I, 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 and I'll talk more about that shitty slow mo. <laughs> we have to revoke the mic. Yeah. <laughs> save, save it for shitty. Don't worry. Don't worry. Save Cut it. off his mic. Cut off his mic. Uh, Sh- uh, shitty uh, slow mo jibber jabber. I don't want to. I don't want to host that. No, podcast. We, we can, <laughs> that and King Kong. And King Kong <laughs> is the is the other grave offender of that. Uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah, oh. a lot of shitty slow motion in that movie. Also. That, that, that movie that again. again this is not about that movie Next I, I don't want to get off topic <laughs> but I do not like that movie I like at that all. movie. We'll what? Save it we'll, save, we'll save it for next save season. For the... Me and you are going to fight. Save um, <laughs> the King Kong podcast. Oh, yeah. So I, I do like how there is they they do show I do like how this movie in, in terms of its agnosticism sism agnosticness Igno- I, uh, agnosticism? Yes. Okay. I like how they show there's good religious people, bad religious people, greedy religious people, not greedy religious people. Like you would argue that King is not a greedy religious person. He has come to terms with his mortality. He's not doing it for money. He's not doing and same same with even the guy who ironically, the guy who's conquering fucking Jerusalem, right? Who in the end says, What is Jerusalem worth? And he says nothing everything. You also, know, I was right. His name's Saladin. Saladin. That's thank you. They say that name like ten thousand times this exactly. movie. I can't. I don't know why. We Saladin. Can't so I mean, he's not a greedy character. He's not like I want to do it for the money. He's. It's. They're caught in this political quagmire, which is starts. You know, started then and continues to this day. Where this guy does this thing, we can work it out. Then this guy does this thing, and now we can't work it out. You know, you're a leader of people. They expect you to. You know, in action. You know what I mean? So. The, whatever the, the Guy and his fucking douchebags, you know, they keep fucking things up and pushing them into war. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting. I do like how the movie really majestically doesn't make any one group just the villain. Yes. It's greed is the villain in this movie, and, and that is personified through characters who are greedy. And this movie was very unfairly criticized when it came out. I think you're right. By when people say, oh, Muslims are portrayed as the bad people. Because all story. the Muslims that, are, that have speaking roles in this movie are like. Charming and 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 characters that you kind of want to root for. And it's just the typical impotent rage of the mass media to have that knee jerk reaction. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. if a Muslim is not portrayed as anything but a saint, it must be anti-Muslim. But I would argue, I would argue that that one Muslim character in this, uh, the guy who plays, he's on Deep Space Nine as the Doctor. Uh, he's the, the dude they meet in the oh, desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, know he, talking about. For everyone he's who all, also on Game of Thrones this current oh, season. Oh, is he so now? He's the, I need to fucking the, watch that show. The uh, King of Dorne. Or, he's like the head guy in yeah, Dorne. Yeah, and in, in this game. movie, he is. we first meet him in the desert, and he is acts like he's the translator, but he's actually like the prince or whatever. You know, that character is like, he doesn't want to really fight. He is just a nice dude. You know what I mean? He's... He's great. He's like the fr- he's a friend to our main character, but on the opposite side. Yeah. So it's kind of like exactly. to criticize this movie as like anything bad. It's not that way at all. You know, the only person who's overly bad is Guy. and you know, the redhead dude who's his and the redhead mentor. guy. You know, yeah. it's the Templars are really like kind of the bad guy of the movie, mm-hmm. but they're not like. Mm-hmm. They're and even what's his, what's the dude the dude with the scar? What actor is that? Jeremy Irons. Jeremy yeah. Irons' character is like he's good. He's on the side of good, and you really want to cheer for him, and he's trying to get shit done. But after a while, he gives up, and you, you're disappointed in him. So I really feel like they really... There's really a lot of characters, and at some points you're rooting for them, and at some points you're disappointed with them. But there's no one who's really a fucking piece of shit other than Guy and the redhead dude. Yep. Yes, I totally agree. Everyone is kind of more or less just following orders, what they think is right. Mm-hmm. And you can't really fault them for that. I mean, not well, they're caught up. Yeah, yeah, they're caught up in their in the thing. Right? If you're if you're war. constituted into the army, you're a soldier now. You're yeah, not gonna. In, you can't do anything other than that. Yeah, I think the movie really explores like we try and fit people into this. These guys are the good guys. These guys are the bad guys. And it's not like that in this movie. And it's not like that in real life. Right. Yeah. So while this movie, and this is something we talked about in the introduction, though, this movie is not historically accurate. The emotional truth of this movie is it historically accurate yes where it's easy to say these are the bad guys and these are the good guys but it's really much more complicated than that it's really you know a mixture of what's going on at the time political situations religious situations you know and i think this is no more better encapsulated than the speech that orlando bloom gives right before the first invasion of jerusalem in, in the movie where he says jerusalem was sacked by no one living in this city and the guy's who were wronged by this? No, everyone who's invading the city it was not born when the city was sacked. So we are paying for someone else's sins, and someone else has to get revenge for things that didn't happen to them. Which is like, 
international politics to a T, right? Like, all the problems in the Middle East is thousands of years of bad things happened to people a long time ago, and now they're bad. They're, as a result, they're happening now. And, you know, you have to pay for the sins of the Father. Yeah. Remind me of Friday the 13th. What? Oh. Teaser. Hey, now. Full circle here. I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> Anyways. So it was a good movie. I don't know why I don't fully connect with it. I don't. Maybe I'm, I'm not feeling great today. I don't know if that's like part of it. Woke up with some pain in my knee. It was cold. Aww. Got some. I got some arthritic knees Aww. here. Acting up, it's, dude. I, it woke me up. I was. I woke up pissed. Like <laughs> ah, my fucking hips. So right, hip podcast coming. Yeah. And I'm not a 50 year old man. So you know, I kind of woke up in a bad mood. So I don't know. Maybe that's it. Because talking through this movie, I mean. I got a lot of nice things to say about it, but when we get the nitpicks, I got a lot of nitpicks too. Yes, yeah. some nitpicks. I got some nitpicks, even though it's a movie. I are, we, really are we ready to, to move on to nitpicks, I, or do you want well, to? I, I had some more things. Fun to car going to come in. Yeah, I, I'm going to chime in. All right, so nitpicks. Oh. <laughs> Where's the bell? The little bell button. Uh, we don't have a bell. <sighs> the bell's in the shop. Okay. Um, one thing I was noticing uh, when you when you get a director who started off very very strong in their career and then. You know, it goes through the ebb and flow. You know, for, for for every Blade Runner, you have a legend. For every Thumb and Louise, you have G.I.G. He's a very... He's a journeyman director. It's like right. He doesn't like to sit around and kind of wait for projects. He kind of, If something's good he's and a working it's intriguing director. enough, he, does, he goes and he does yeah, it. Yeah, he, so. he goes for it, which I... Keep him busy, yeah. love it. Because he was, he was a commercial director before he started doing movies. So I think that kind of comes from that. Like, you just kind of go to the next gig, you know? Yeah. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a thing going on in this movie where there's parts of it that felt like I'm watching a Ridley Scott film. Like, I see his signature all over. And there's other parts that... Like that shitty slow motion? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's, in I'll gla- stop. it's in Gladiator a lot, too. So. Oh, oh, fucking Gladiator. I mean, that's... All, I, I mean, I We're saw not talking lot, Gladiators right I saw, now. It's a lot of Gladiator. I saw... I think the violence of Gladiator exponentially more in this movie as at the same time. So I was on a style and I saw his mark, but part of, a lot of part of it did feel like I was watching, you know, like a Game of Thrones, like a TV serial really? about... When, and it's weird because there's obviously... Any specific part you could think of? I think a lot of the non-action scenes and I think a lot of just the random filler where there was, there was, there was, there was, there was some scenes that didn't jump out at me as being Ridley Scott. And it's weird because when you look at Game of Thrones, which came out obviously years after this, and I don't know if it's because we're it's so ingrained in our minds and pop culture that we can only see movies like this, historical things that take place where people, you know, very medieval style, you see those and it kind of translates into, oh, this looks like Game of Thrones, but it's not. So it's a weird thing to look at. So I feel like they've got a lot of... Wait, what was your point there? That this feels like Game of Thrones or it doesn't feel like Game of Thrones? It feels like... I'm watching Game of Thrones, but it's weird because this came out obviously before that. Right. That's what I'm saying. So it's a, and, 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 I don't, and, and Ridley Style doesn't come through with that because all I'm seeing, oh, it's ingrained in my mind. When I watch this, I think, oh, it's, I just feel like I'm watching an episode of Game of Thrones because it's the same, very similar style. So it's a very weird thing to experience. I guess that's my point. Game of Thrones is a very well shot show. <laughs> So that's where I've heard that. <laughs> so, uh, so nothing else. We'll, we'll I, got, take, I, got, we'll I, I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't. I don't have any response to that because I'm not familiar with that. I don't. But I will say this. This felt very epic to me. It didn't feel like a TV show or anything. No, I'm not saying that. It's a big movie. No, I'm not. I'm not saying a TV show is it's small. I said it felt like I was watching. I felt like this as if this could be on. I get, I get on what you're HBO saying. or I get on a Netflix original series. It, right, it, it right, had right. that feel to it at certain right. times, and then certain times it felt like. Okay, now we're getting into the real Ridley like meat of it. Yeah, especially at the end when you get like really with the themes and the mm-hmm. feeling of it. Then that's when it started feeling like a movie. But, but there there are certain parts where it did feel a little a little smaller than it it it, it should have been. Certain parts, not the whole thing. Right. So that was, that was like I was saying. Um, I want to throw out one thing for you: nitpicks. Um, the special features on this DVD and Blu-ray set are fantastic and you should watch them they go very much into all the little details of the production and it goes way into um, the issues in post-production when the studio and Ridley Scott did not agree on the story which led to the truncated and inferior theatrical version interesting they pulled no punches in that like this movie has the 20th Century Fox logo on the box and it has some not nice things Excuse me, to say about the people at Fox. Calling out Jim Giannopoulos? A little bit. Right. <laughs> do you have to censor that name? I uh, do not have to censor that name. I don't know what you're talking about, Matt. So, <laughs> and it's interesting that 
<laughs> they freely talk about it. Yep. I mean, yeah, they they talk about they had like two different versions in the editing room and just fought their hardest to like. I guess 20th Century Fox hated the Boy King. Mm-hmm. Like the the Boy. I will say, they I absolutely wasn't... demanded that get cut out, and they had that version of the movie Satan aside with the Boy King in it, mm-hmm. and they're like, this story just does not work with. You know, without that. So. I think this... I mean, from my memory of it, I think the story did work, but not as well. I will say that they do spend a lot of time with the Boy King, and there are a couple of scenes with the Boy King that are, like, devil. There's a scene where he puts his hand over a flame, and then you realize, like, oh, he has leprosy, and then that scene repeats itself again in front of his mother. And at storytelling-wise, I don't think you would need them both. Yeah, I don't think you need the flame scene. I think you could do it. I think that's a great reveal when they're dripping the hot wax... And it hits his hand, and he doesn't flinch. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's a great single reveal. But yeah, they kind of do it twice, so. right? And that flame scene features your favorite shitty slow mo, so. <laughs> among, among many others. Don't get me started. <laughs> and also, there's a scene where we first meet the boy, where Orlando Bloom steps on his toy, fixes it, and then the boy comes out and gets it. And it's like, we. Don't, I mean, you could if you wanted to get rid of 30 seconds of this movie, you could just take that out. Little wiener kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, had to be said. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So you guys want to get any nitpicks here? Just some nitpicks. All right. I think we might need more than a minute, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. So I mean, we've already covered shitty slow mo. I'm gonna cover it again. <laughs> Forty five seconds of pure shitty slow mo. Oh okay. no, sixty seconds. I'm sorry. Right. You ready? Yeah. Go for it. Start. Opening titles. Opening title text. Very meh. I don't want to. Show, don't tell me. Yeah, I wanted there to be a, a voiceover instead of a text, so that would be more impactful. Right. Uh, Martin Kazakis as Guy, more cartoony than I remember. I think he can go a little over the top sometimes. He, uh, it's he, very, he yeah. has the weakest performance in the film. Mm-hmm. Especially in the beginning of the movie, it's very hard to tell who's important. By the time we get to the forest, we know who's important. But in the beginning, it's like, is this brother important? Who's? What's going on here? Assistant blacksmith, can we get a fucking tissue in this, th- this bitch? <laughs> Wipe your fucking face. Yeah, Why yeah. is his face constantly wet? Oh, was it, there, he was a surf for God's sake. They were yeah, not leave him alone. He, was, he, he didn't know better. Uh, was it, there was a, the, well, the guy with the axe had pigtails? What? what? Pigtails is silly. He was German. No, but why do you have pigtails? Like braided pigtails? Trying to sell me cocoa? What's going on here? I don't like it. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's a minute, but we're not done. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's really my only nitpick was Martin Kazakis. Shit slow. Uh, oh, did, did I mention sh- shitty slow mo? No. Please mention it one more time. Okay. Uh, this is a this is a very minor nitpick. But when they first get attacked with Liam Neeson in the forest, there's a million arrows flying, and then when they reveal how many archers there are, there's like three of them. <laughs> like, those, of... The, those dudes were just pumping them out. Dude, lousy with arrows. There's just they couldn't just keep shooting, they couldn't shooting get five at a time. <laughs> get apparently. Quick enough. Why does Eva Green give the crown to Guy? She has no motivation. The only reason why she wanted uh, to, to get uh, his army, I believe. but she's only wanted she only wanted his army to protect her kid because yeah. politically well, then it becomes to protect Jerusalem though. From from what they're the problem. They're always gonna in, they, if 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 <laughs> they're trying to protect from the Muslims who they perceive as the bad guy. But what we really know is that these guys are the ones who are screwing everything up. But, the Templars, right? So, but. That doesn't that she's caught in the middle of this because her son gets the her her brother dies the son gets the crown she agrees to to keep her relationship with Guy going to protect him not really sure knowing that he'll probably be aggressive more aggressive than her brother then she tries to keep the peace by having the kid sign the peace treaty thingies or whatever and then the kid dies fuck ye fuck ye now you don't like him. You know what I mean? Get with Orlando Bloom. Or if you're too emotionally distraught as you, you just murder your own child, I understand. Maybe not in the, Which the place is to be married. One, one thing that I think this cut explains way better with the afterward cut is her descent into severe depression is she had to kill her own child. Right, right, right. Which is un- totally understandable. Yes. But, yeah, why why, why suffer Guy? Like, get rid of him. You, Jeremy Irons will kill him if you ask him to. I don't know. He's up for anything, that Jeremy. Irons. Yeah, he's up for you. he's up for whatever. Um, oh, also, and again, this is very minor, but we always we keep cutting back to Eva Green some, for some random times where she's like not even really in the scene, but we'll cut back to her and she'll be like nodding. It's just like sure. like listen, we don't need her right now. She's very great, love her, best thing in all of Sin City too. Nothing against Eva Green, but every time fucking some guy makes a speech, we don't need to cut back to her. 
Don't need that. All right. I had that B-roll. Got to use it. Why did Why did they want to war? The uh, the Knights Templars? For glory? Yeah. Okay, I retract it. Because, because <laughs> that's, like, that's a good enough explanation. Those, those goddamn Muslims are the bad guy. Okay. And they okay. wanted to kill I'll, the Muslims. I withdraw that statement then. <laughs> I... I, I because I just, I just want to, uh, I was just like, is there something I'm missing? And it turns out there's not. So that's fine. That's not a nitpick. Right. The love triangle, love triangles in movies are the most played out fucking stupidest. Everyone bitches about like, they don't like superhero movies. They don't like this, they don't like that. We need to get rid of love triangles. There's nowhere a love triangle goes other than, other than some weird polyamorous, like, listen, you cheat on me with him and I cheat on you with her. Let's all just be in a couple. That's the only way you've not seen a love triangle. Other than that, we've seen all of this shit. We've seen when the guy's supportful. We see when he's vengeful. We've seen it. We've seen two guys and a girl. We've seen one girl and two... One guy and two girls. We've seen everything. There's nothing left to do with love triangles. Let's stop doing fucking love triangles. Let's get some love octagons going. <laughs> <laughs> just this whole thing of like... Uh, just, it just, I just hate that okay. so much. Let, let the record show that Davey hates nothing more than love triangles and shitty slow-mo. Those are my... Those are literally... Literally the two things I hate most about moving image storytelling. <laughs> There's nothing that drives me more crazy than those two things. Um, yeah, and just fucking kill <laughs> Guy. Just fucking kill him. He's right there. He's the worst. Kill me, kill me now, I'm right here. <laughs> kill me. Yeah, do it. Do it now. I, uh, w- I wish he said that. I he, did, he did say that. I he did say kill me. This movie would have benefited from a predator. And we're talking about something else. Conan like, the Barbarian. And Conan. I think with those two. In I, this disagree. Movie I disagree. I disagree with the make... Predator, but I do agree with Conan. Be Crom. Yeah. Crom. So I'm just saying, like, like, you know, in real life, we should all obey the law and not kill people, obviously. But this is movie land. Kill that I, motherfucker. I think your nitpick would be better if his performance wasn't so villainous. Like if he was a little more of a level headed kind of guy like in this, he, in this cause he's completely irredeemable in this movie yeah he is not there is not one scene that makes him seem like a good person yeah. so I think if he was a little more complex that would have solved your nitpick I agree with I think, you so. I agree with you but you know what it's all it's not all about negativity so let's do 60 seconds of awesome things yes I know we went way over on the nitpicks <laughs> but I got five I got minutes mad in, five minutes in the picks. Yeah, okay yeah. ready yeah here we go Again, great visuals, well directed, well shot. Totally great visuals. Beautiful productions. Can I, adding on the visuals, the, the image of all the birds eating all of the dead people. Yes. It's a, that's a devastating image, man. That's great. Uh, my favorite part, saying the title of the movie in the movie. Which I do twice. I, uh, nothing, nothing satisfies me more and that, than the, that. The peace of Jerusalem, that will be the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I so good. That line. I, I do like how Orlando Bloom almost dies like ten times in this movie, but he doesn't. And and somehow that it doesn't get cheesy. You're totally fine with it. Uh, at least I was. And he gets roughed up too. Like he yeah. doesn't always just look like a pretty boy for the whole movie. I, I do like how the war in this movie is vicious and awful, and it's not like we're having a grand old. Uh, time it's like you know guys are getting stabbed in the eyeballs and shit i like the visual storytelling of the war where it shows that they're outnumbered it does but they don't just say oh we're outnumbered like it shows yeah really good shots really good visual storytelling like they also, are outnumbered also how like uh, in the beginning we're about to run out of time we're gonna just keep I, going here can, can I no in? no you can't <laughs> i like how in the visual storytelling of the fighting personified no better than in the first fight they get sneak attacked guys get hit they fight through it you know like the 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 Muslim dude and the German guy are you know they're tagged like fatally wounded but they're still fighting mm-hmm. and then all the other dudes start going around and flanking and stuff and you really see how the combat's working is really good. Yep. Matt, would you like to say something? I, I feel it's irrelevant now because everyone's got what they want to say and I'm trying. I got to I got more, homie. Oh, okay, we got more. Uh, I do like to. Show so uh, no, <laughs> give me this microphone. Stop. 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 <laughs> we keep touching it. Uh, I like how they show the mechanics of the machinery. Especially the catapults. Mm. Yeah, that was cool. They, they showed the actual flinging of the, you know, the coils and things. That was very, very nice. You can tell they did their homework on trebuchet, trebuchets and such. Indeed. Uh, I like how that red-headed guy gets killed. Where it's like, hey, I didn't give you a glass of water. Mm-hmm. And then he cuts his throat. I like the bucket full of ice. Yep. Get a nice old ice bucket. Nice in that hot desert. I like that they actually built a siege tower to use in camera. I think they built a couple of the siege towers, actually. Mm-hmm. One of which burnt down when they were off production. Like, one of the fuel tanks exploded and it burnt down. And they used the burned out husk in the movie. Oh, nice. Like, nicely, they, nicely repurposed. When they, uh, when our Balian and Saladin are 
coming to terms. You can see it in the background, the burned out husk of a siege tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like how the bad guy is technically on the good guy's side for part of the movie. And the bad guy is not the invader. The bad guy is the, the enemy from within your own country. Uh, I like that. I like the surrender scene where all Balian wants is for them to offer uh, offer to not hurt the, the citizens of Jerusalem. And he makes they make each other ask like for things, which was really good. Like, you know, that scene was yeah. very understated, but very like, hey, I don't ask for anything. And then he kind of like, he kind of like, like plays his hand in the right way to make the dude offer him what he mm-hmm. wants. And But they both know what they want. Yeah. They both know that they're both good men, ultimately, even though they send a million people to their deaths. And he stands his ground saying, if you attack this city, I will cut you down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You will you will lose more people in very horrific ways. Right. Anything else, Matt? Um, probably. Let me just uh, peruse my notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I had a star-studded cast, which I liked. Cameo by uh, Frank Zappa in there. <laughs> Uncre- uncredited. <laughs> uncredited. Uh, him, you yeah, know, it was good. That one priest dude kind of looks like Rooker Howard's stunt double. A little bit. You know. A little bit. I didn't catch that. A little bit. Uh, I really do wish that uh, the the knight from The Last Crusade was in this movie. You know, showing the origin of the knight of the crusade, and then he travels and meets up with Indiana Jones at the end. I, I, I would like to see that movie. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> Uh, you guys. <laughs> I, get, I get you trying to be playful here, Matt, but I'm too fucking fired up about this shitty slow motion and the stupid love triangles to, to play with this. Oh, boy. Fine, you gotta go ahead. Alright, so let's, let's, let's wrap this up. We'll go, we're going to our Q&As. That was my foot. Our friends on the Canon podcast are, are always bagging on Ridley Scott for having... Uh, char- he's, the criticism that they have and a lot of people have is that he always has unrealistic characters. This is no more literal... Than in Prometheus, when a guy tries to pet a fucking space snake and gets his arm broken and killed. The cobra vagina. Yeah, he, uh, so, I mean, that's just the worst. Yep. So, do you think that's true? And if that's true, is it true in this movie? I, I do not think I, it's and true. And I believe we addressed this a little bit beforehand, but we're, we're, we're circling back now that we've seen that movie. I do not think that's true, and I especially don't think it's true in this movie. This yeah. movie has very well rounded characters. Uh, screenwriter was William Monahan, who also wrote The Departed, won an Oscar for his work on The Departed, and I think he's a good young screenwriter. So, this movie had very well filled out characters. All right. Well, first I'm going to say I don't think that there are friends at the canon. Just kidding. You guys are great, probably. Um, <laughs> uh, don't boycott us. Uh, out of control, Fallen Guy. Hey, hey. <laughs> get riled up about the slow mo. Hey. We're all, we're, all, we're all on base here. You keep bringing the fucking snowmobile back up. I'm just, just, trying to, I'm just to, getting me more crazy about it. That blood boiled. <laughs> Come on, it's fine. But, uh, uh, the, I, I, I think that they confuse unbelievable characters with interesting or dynamic characters because when you look at a bunch of characters from Ridley Scott films, they're all very interesting and dynamic and complex. And I think that maybe they're looking for people who are you know, simpler characters or less interesting characters so i think that they're bagging on it for the wrong reason Mm. so i think that he always has interesting characters and they don't necessarily agree with that but maybe they're looking for something different i think that sometimes he has unrealistic characters and i'm gonna go back to prometheus where it's a fucking whole cast of unrealistic characters but this movie definitely does not disappoint in terms of characters that feel good and do things that you like and and let you down and are very three-dimensional in my opinion and he he even admits he's not involved in the script writing process very often like he never has a written by credit like he very much takes the material that he likes and i think some of those varying character you know how dynamic they are how not dynamic they are if you want to point out some are a product of the script and not necessarily his direction personally mm-hmm. yeah so he was, he's worked with a variety of different writers for sure yeah. and a lot of different genres as well so we talked about director's cuts re-editing a movie i think we're all in agreement that this movie was pretty good right matt yeah it was good it's a good movie i, I, anyway, like I think this is a great film that will stand the test of time yeah i think i think it's it's very solid in in and it does shine in the genre of historical epic war movies if that's the subgenre that I can put yeah. it into. So I, th- I do think it's it's a pretty good movie. And, um, 
you know, re- it's not a gimmick that this is a. Oh, it's oh, not a gimmick. This is a, a re-edited movie. I don't think that's. I don't think it's a marketing ploy or, or anything like that. I do think that this this seems to be a more cohesive vision compared to my memory of what existed beforehand. Exactly. Moving on, music and cinematography. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, love the cinematography. Didn't love that music. There was parts of the the, the music that I enjoyed and the other parts I hated. There was a, a like a low reverb thing. I think when they were on the the ocean, it was like a. I don't know if you can hear that, but okay. Well, that was the sound, and it was really <laughs> awesome. But there's other times where the music, if the, if the if the composer would have used uh, motifs or like lay motifs to establish a theme for certain characters, that would be very interesting, very fitting of a sweeping epic movie. But if you just have rhythmic pounding of drums to indicate whatever you're trying to say, that gets a little boring and a little old. You're telegraphing the emotions instead of implying them. So I think he has good music cues when it. There's a lot of good vocal stuff and a lot of good stuff with the stringed instruments. I think sometimes he goes into his old bag of tricks of drums and all, like you were saying. So, um, an uneven score, but when it is good, it's I it, think it, it really yeah. fits the story and it is a unique sounding score. It doesn't sound like something you hear in a lot of, a lot of epic movies. Is this movie too similar to Gladiator? No. No. Nope, and I will say this movie is better than Gladiator in every single way. Yes, I would agree, and I like me some Gladiator. And I don't like me some Gladiator. I have not seen Gladiator in 15 years. Alright, fair. Well. I mean, it was one of those movies you rent because... Oh, it, 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 it promised horrific violence and gore, and when you're 14, you're like, oh, I need that. Yep. And that's so, why we watched it. So, um, is being historically accurate important in a movie? No. Hmm... To, to a point. It can't be completely unrealistic where it's, you know, they use some kind of modern technology or... People smoking like, cigarettes and... Uh, exactly, yeah. If somebody... <laughs> if somebody bust out their Zippo in this movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Then we'd have issues. I, I, as you said earlier, I think emotional truths are a lot more important than factual truths well, when the, it comes to a movie. The, the dialogue did seem like it was of the time, whereas if you watch a period piece... Uh, movies or tv now they they use a lot of they say fuck a lot they use a lot of uh swears and you wonder is it did they actually curse that much was that in the vernacular back then or is that just because what we've seen up to this point is they don't they they never in movies they don't put it in the movies they go watch game of thrones like they're swearing like sailors but it sounds so contemporary it takes me out of the experience of this world and i'm glad that they didn't do it with this they didn't you know, muck it up with a bunch of swears. You, you, take, you get taken a lot of. I noticed you get taken out of a lot of experiences there, Father Carl. It took me out. No, I'm just kidding. No, it didn't take. It didn't take me out of it. No, there's certain things that'll take you out of experience, but I think in the past a lot of cursing was like more like religious based. I remember that for Deadwood, with it was like you know they say in Deadwood they they loved the word cocksucker. That wasn't really in vogue at the time, but a lot of the curses were like religious curses that wouldn't really make sense to us in nowadays times. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, like, people had more messed up teeth in that time, too, but they don't, you know, put fake dentures in everyone's mouth. You know what I mean? Agree. I don't know where I'm going with this, <laughs> but I will say that I don't, I don't really care. I didn't, I don't, I don't look at this movie to teach me about history in the literal sense of there was a guy named Bailey who lived in France <laughs> who did all this shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like there was a guy named Bailey who did live in France who did do a lot of shit, but not this shit. That's fine. Because this movie is more about, like, an indictment of r- religious extremists, where it's like, those are people who will do things, who, who will use religion to get what they want, no matter what it is, and don't really have any connection to that faith other than that it is a source of power. Yeah. That's really the, what the message of, or what's, what's the truth of this movie, you know what I mean? And so, I don't know. I don't really care. Hold for sirens. Eh, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Moving on. So, I mean... In, off of that, you know, uh, Ridley Scott said that Balian is agnostic, just like me. He's not fighting a holy war. He's just trying to get the fact that not everyone is bad, not everyone is good. You know, it's it's dynamic. And I think that is communicated really well in this movie. Yes, very well. Yes, I agree. So to wrap this motherfucker up, in the end, do you guys like this movie and does it work? I like the movie. It works. It's fun. The director's cut did not feel like it as long as it would be sometimes if you have an epic movie it can drag but 
This movie really does it, have a nice pace it, to it. It's paced really well, and you get your action, you get your story, you get your kicks and your punches and your things. It didn't, <laughs> and it, your tomahawks to the brain. Yeah, yep. you get all of that. <laughs> and I don't. But, well, there's a fair amount of kicking and punching. But you get it all. So, yeah, it, it's very well paced. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's uneven at all. Yeah, I, 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 I'd say I enjoyed it. It's good. I'd say I enjoyed it, and I, I do think it's a good movie. I did not... I, I think the beginning is a little bit slow for me and um i don't know if it's i don't know if it's fun up until like maybe the last third of the movie hmm. i'm it, gonna say it, it picked up when uh let me get closer here it really picked up well, after the shipwreck i think that's when the movie started going really full force everything before that was your build up but i think after the shipwreck that was into it mm-hmm. kev um, as I said, I picked this movie. I thought it and, was. And gonna... as such, we'll give you the final word. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a risky. Pick. <laughs> you thought it was going to be a risky pick. I thought it was going to be a risky pick for this. time. Sorry, I'll let you. I'll let you finish. Um, but a bit for time. I know a lot. Of, there's certain people that like historical epics kind of aren't in vogue at the moment and are kind of seen as like an old. Mm-hmm. That, that's like an old Hollywood picture. See, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think this is a great example of sometimes, you know, more footage can make a movie feel faster. It can expand the movie, make it a lot better, make you care more about the characters. And I think this is a really interesting case study of they added almost an hour of footage, I think. And this movie feels light years better than its theatrical cut. So it's a really smart application of character moments, story moments to make a movie much richer and much more full. Right. And I think that if the idea of this movie appeals to you and you haven't seen it, and I don't know why you're listening to the, at this point if you haven't seen it because we are <laughs> spoiling things left and right, I do think you should watch it. I, you know, I, I think it. I think it is worth it. You know? It's it's a human historical epic. Like it's, it's not, a, Yeah. I feel like a lot of... Histo- I think I talked about this in the first half of the episode. I think historical epics get caught up in the swords and sandals kind of thing and just really focus on the aesthetic and they lose the human story and this has good characters with a good human arc not just a historical and on that note I think that's what keeps it because it's a movie about religion and politics so I think the human element is what keeps it interesting yes yeah. and uh, when when you're dealing with a character or an event that happened so long ago you, you can be more daring with the idea versus if you're doing something that happened in the past century where it's still, either it's tied to a certain idea or a notion, like you, you know, like I forget when we're talking about American Sniper, where you can't go all the way you wanted to with that movie because it's so fresh in people's mind, and they're you know the, the states will prevent you from making the kind of movie that it should be. So I think when you have a material like this, it you can really go for it and not be afraid of. I mean, he went really far with it, mm-hmm. and he got a lot of flack, but I think it's 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 great that you can really go for it with something like this uh how old the material is that's all yeah i'm glad you guys liked this <laughs> yeah yeah, I, did like <laughs> it. I, did. yeah. I was it's fun i was a little worried that you know that it would kind of get ragged on but yeah i think nah, i think the story connected and i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So. i think uh there are other movies we're going to do that are going to be even in more trouble than this one yeah that's fine yeah. So. like teen wolf 2 nope <laughs> <laughs> A damn masterpiece. All right. No. <laughs> so that I think that's it for us here. Anyone want to say anything else? I think we, um, we kind of covered it all. So Any, uh, it just, if the last time you watched Kingdom of Heaven was in the theater in 2005, seek out this director's cut. It I think that's is true. a vast improvement. Yeah. All right. So follow us on Twitter at Speaking Cinema. We're on Facebook at Speaking Cinema. SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher. Subscribe. Rate. Do whatever you want. Tell a friend or don't. I can't ask you to do that. No, don't, no, don't, don't be that guy. Tell your friends about speaking. <laughs> what what, what guy? <laughs> what? Oh, oh no, I was just being goofy. No, it's, no, what you're saying is good. Okay. So, you guys have anything to plug? Any plugs? Uh, no plugs for me. Got nothing. Mm, no, this is the only thing I'm doing. So yeah, just, just <laughs> so, yeah. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> yeah, this is my plug. Just listen to this fucking right. show. So we're out of here, you guys. See you next time. Next episode, tune in, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you for listening.
and do the bat two C. Bat two C lessons for free. <laughs> oh, I can plug that. Yeah. <laughs> for free bat two C lessons. Bat two C lessons for free. Uh. Hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't watch it. Yeah, but... No, I did read that Wikipedia article, and I gotta say, yeah. that shot selection, spotty. All right, so uh, here we go. Episode six of SC SMJJ Kingdom of Heaven. Director's cut. Director's cut. Is that some dog barking? <laughs> a dog barking? <laughs> Should I close the window? I mean, yeah. it's really hot in here. So I don't know. Up, it'll be fine. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Pause for a helicopter. <laughs> They're out tonight. Get a bird. I'm gonna bird. close this door. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Kev, um, be quick because we're gonna start sweating. dying here with this close window. <laughs> okay. Um, I so think you're it, saying it would have to be a case by case basis. All right, so sound speeds, and I'll count us in. Is this recording? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. We got it. All right, so. You going to move your laptop? Am I going to move it? I thought you said we're not going to move it. Oh, I wouldn't. I can move it. I wasn't sure if that really. Can you hear the difference? Eh, not, not really. Not especially. But if it's easier for you to have it on your It is not. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's keep it right there. Okay. It'll be fine. So, enough you were driver. Hey. 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 This is totally going to go at the end of the podcast. Okay, five, four, three, two, one.